Gotta take a little time A little time to think things over I better read between the lines In case I need it when I'm older
enjoyed our first morning. Some really lovely speakers, fantastic information. And while other people are walking back into the room, I'd like to share with you that Anne and I will be leading a pilgrimage in 2016 to what I consider to be one of the most beautiful places in the world, one of the most beautiful places in North America, and that is Banff, Canada. Now, I often tell people from Canada, without intending to be patronizing, that when I go to Canada, I can absolutely feel the higher vibration. And the reason, though, is that Canadians have an incredible benefit of what is called the Canadian shield. The Canadians live on a giant crystal of metamorphic rock that is two and a half billion years old. And it absolutely acts as an energizer and a stabilizer. And it covers the eastern two thirds of Canada. And then in the west, the Canadians have the benefit in Alberta and British Columbia of a powerful columnar of the Rocky Mountains between the 45th and 55th latitudes. Absolutely stunning energy. Western Canada in Banff has some incredible lakes called Lake Louise, Spirit Lake, Pato Lake. These are turquoise blue lakes, but they are non-Newtonian fluids. Water is a Newtonian fluid. What you have in Canada is water that has a permanently suspended particulate, like milk. And this makes it a non-Newtonian plastic fluid in the scientific terms. Now, these incredible waters in Banff, Canada, uh, in British Columbia, have a permanently suspended particulate they call glacier silt from the ice movement that ground up that rock. And that particulate is silicate, the base component of quartz. And so when you, go, you see these incredible waters that have that absolutely iridescent turquoise blue as though it has a light from the inside shining out. How many have been to Lake Louise in the summertime? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That water has an energy field because it is a liquid crystal. It is a plastic fluid with quartz, with silicate suspended in it. And that color is absolutely breathtaking. The first time I walked around the corner at Lake Louise and saw that, I thought, my God, this is a living postcard. And then you go to places like Lake O'Hara, which is a non-commercialized Lake Louise. And then you go to Yoho National Park near Emerald Lake, and it is just stunning. These places are an anchor of Archangel Michael, that nurturing energy. Incredible, incredible places. So Anne and I are organizing a tour. I've been to that part of Canada. I lived there for a while, actually before I moved to Brazil, before I had met Anne, I loved it. We are organizing an eight day tour that we are tailor fashioning to places that we know that are very, very special. And we're gonna have time in those. So. Within the next few weeks, we'll put out the information on that. And there will be limited attendance because really the time to go, uh, it's beautiful year round, but the real time to go is in the peak of the summer. But you have issues when you go to Western Canada. Uh, they have this incredible rodeo called the uh, Calgary Stampede. 
And if you're a rodeo person, it's one of the best. And it occupies every hotel. And it's, it's just not the best time to go if you want to get reasonable prices on hotels. So we are probably going to push it to after the, the stampede and make it in early September. The problem with going in early June is that sometimes Lake Louise is still frozen. I've been to Lake Louise a hundred times and I love it. And I went there one time in May and the lake was still frozen. They, and they still had horse sleds going out over it. And I thought, well, I, you know, the spring was starting to come. This is like the 20th of May. And I thought, well, I'll walk out there. <laughs> well, I got out to the middle and my foot went down into the water about two feet. And I thought, oh my God, American lost at Lake Louise. <laughs> sank 300 feet to the bottom, and that is a deep lake. I backtracked and I made a promise to myself never to walk on an icy lake again. The point being, Lake Louise is still sometimes frozen over in mid-June, and so we're going to try to find that window. I promise you this will be one of the most picturesque experiences of your life, and Nature is alive up there. I mean, if they're, it's like Ireland and, and like Scotland in the sense that you can just feel those devic energies there. They're just incredible. Beautiful place. So we'll be releasing details on that. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about one of my favorite topics again. That is what uh, Casey referred to as the forgotten science of vibration and light, a science that was well known to the Atlanteans and other advanced societies. And you know, John does a brilliant presentation on how they used crystals in Atlantis. And they used crystals for out-of-body travel. They used crystals to communicate with the divine. My book has been a bit delayed. I've got this book in me uh, about what I think was the true story of Atlantis. I have a little bit different take on it. I feel like I, uh, how many of you feel like you were in Atlantis? I think all of us here were. Casey has just a incredible, prolific file of information about Atlantis, but I have a little bit different take on how I think Atlantis fell. Uh, I think that uh, it involved those two groups, the sons of Belial and the family of the Law of One. We are the family of the Law of One. Now, in Atlantis, and I think this was absolutely an Atlantean colony, a Casey and a lot of you may not realize this, Casey said that some of the earlier humans which inhabited physical bodies as they were experiencing, and, and I'm not going to get into John's area of the story of the soul tonight, but he talks about humans that had scales, tails, and feathers. And Hugh Lynn Casey, the father of uh, Charles Thomas, talks about genetic engineering. Casey speaks about genetic engineering that was originally used to create a highly attuned physical body that our souls could incarnate into. And it's my belief that this was done on the main island of Arian. And that these bodies that they engineered removed the scales, removed the feathers, and were originally intended to give everybody a common chassis to work within. And these became known as the Aryans. And then this group became under the control of a charismatic group that believed in Aryan superiority. They wanted to remove all of these feathers and tails and defects. And they let that power go to the wrong place. But there was one problem. They didn't have control of the crystals. Our family. You feel chills on your arm as I tell this story? Because some of it happened right here. Our family had control of the crystals. 
and we used thought to a certain degree to control them. And the Aryans had developed genetic engineering then to a degree where they were creating what Casey called autotrons, robotically controlled human slaves. And human souls were being trapped in these and they could not evolve their lifetime. And so this is original with the Metatronic readings that I've written. It's coming out in the books. We had control of the crystals and they were only used in good purpose. And the sons of Belial approached us and they controlled all the agriculture, all the industry. And they said, we will stop making these slaves if you will teach us how to use these crystals. Right now, only your scientists, priests have that technology and, you know, we'd like to use them too. We'd like to have they so in that and we can use them to lift the energies, lift the vibrations in schools and places of that nature. We can use them to make the plants grow faster. We can use them to make the weather more controllable because in Atlantis, they had this second moon. And I've had very, very clear pictures of the second moon in Atlantis, but it was not a natural moon. It was a giant crystal satellite and we could see it and it was self-regulated and it floated all around the greater Atlantis. And of course, Atlantis had three great periods. The first real powerful phase of Atlantis was about 200,000 years ago. But that second moon of Atlantis was a giant crystal satellite and it was used to regulate the power stations. How many of you are aware that Edgar Cayce did readings for Nikolai Tesla? He did. He gave specific readings on how to develop a perpetual motion energy machine. So this man was scientific. This man was tapping into energies. Tesla was absolutely part of our family. So was Einstein. These were brilliant scientists as priests where sacred science was combined with, with spirituality. And so these Aryans approached us and said, will stop the genetic engineering because by this time they were creating races of slaves. And they also were doing these Dr. Moreau experiments where they took giant beasts and combined them with human DNA for labor in mines. And that's what I think Bigfoot is. I think Bigfoot is a remnant of genetic engineering. In the beginning, they were controlled to a certain degree by radio waves and by injections. But I think what is left is something that does not fit into nature. Many people have said to me, are the Bigfoot and the Sasquatch aliens? And I said, no, they're more from the earth than you are. Are they advanced beings? No, they are an abomination of nature. They don't fit and they don't wanna be here and they're on their way out. And I think that in less, I think there's less than a thousand on the planet now, but they don't fit into the new energy that's shifting on the earth and they're finding their way out. And it seems like a long time, but when you get above linear time, time is instantaneous. And it's always, it's always funny to me when you see these Bigfoot shows and you see these guys doing this whooping and hollering as though this half man, half animal being wouldn't recognize the difference. <laughs> People talk about the bloodhound having this incredible sense of smell. Do you know what animal has the greatest sense of smell on the earth? The bear. The remnants of the Bigfoot, the Sasquatch, have an even greater sense of smell than the bear. I think they can smell humans from a great distance. I think they're primarily nocturnal. I think they're out of sync with nature. I think that they're moving, but I think they were the last successful to a certain degree in terms of uh, physiological standpoint 
that they were the last. I think there's very few left, but there are a lot in Arkansas in that area. And by a lot, I mean there's probably a colony of about 20 or 30 of them. And they're not that difficult to see in the National Forest area. I lived there when I was 18 and 19, and we used to drive up to the mountain to watch them. But it did part of why I think that Arkansas was absolutely an Atlantean colony. If they used crystal technology in a Tesla-esque way to broadcast energy, and these massive crystals were grown in an expediated process and tuned with music tones underneath these massive caverns that exist in Arkansas, they would have used, to a certain degree, these man-beasts, uh, perhaps in some part of that role. But they are here. And so when the sons of Belial approached the law of one with that agreement to teach them how to use the crystals, there was an agreement made, and then the promises over centuries were broken. A council had been established that was mainly Poseidon's law of one with Arians. We had, I think it was like a five to four difference. And they were able, in the times of the wars with the Greek colonies, they were able to convince one of the Poseidons to change their vote. And that allowed the Arians to have the trained people to know how to use the crystals. And they used them in warring purposes. I had this charismatic leader that was talking about this master race. Does that make sense? Does that kind of tie in with Himmler and uh, Hitler and the Nazis, uh, this, this Aryan aspect? And that energy is an overbleed, and it has come out in different times. The Spanish Inquisition was also that same energy of the sons of Belial. And they came out through the Hapgood family of Austria that were in combination with Spain. And had the Spanish Inquisition have come to the Western world, it would have changed the way that we move forward. And we would not be facing the ascension now because it had nothing to do with the nationality of the Austrians or the Spanish. It had everything to do with the energy of that dark force that is absolutely part of duality. And we're seeing that same energy that was in the Spanish Inquisition surface again now. Because it always hides as a wolf in sheep's clothing. And you know what that energy is. I don't have to say it. Yes. Absolutely. And it's part of the duality. And it's always there. And part of what we are here to do is to learn how to move forward through it, to learn how to be responsible creators. Ascension has always happened one heart at a time, one heart at a time. And the ascension that took place in 2012 was for the planet, not for humanity. I think we are 300 years away from the mass of humanity being at an enlightened stage. But what we can do now is co-create that future because we have to learn what responsible co-creation crystals are a part of it. all of this is a part of it and so when we come here now to the place where the crystals are reactivating and they are reactivating now we're going to see an energetic change in areas like this and in areas like Brazil, where that crystalline vibration exists. Someone here, I don't remember exactly who, sent an email and said, I live near Mena, Arkansas. And they said, but the people around here don't really seem enlightened. <laughs> and I said, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. I live in Texas. <laughs> We can't all live in Canada. <laughs> and we're influenced by those energies. We don't have that Canadian shield. And not to burst the bubbles, but I tell all the Canadians, if you were born here, you'd be just like us. <laughs> we, have, we have a much greater 
effort required to achieve our enlightenment. It's, it's much easier in Canada because all the people are nice. In terms of the re-coming of the law of one, Casey absolutely spoke about law of one Atlanteans coming back in mass, coming back by the hundreds of thousands. And we are here now, and we have the opportunity to get it right. We have to let go of that associated guilt about how we lost those crystals. They were taken from us in a cunning ploy, and my book will talk about this, but I think that the sons of Belial took them in a cunning ploy by bringing one of the council members over and then they begin using them to create earthquakes in other areas of war and they were using these in untoward ways that created imbalances in the earth now i think that that led to the end that's not to say that this also circumvented or that this excludes the probability of asteroids and cosmic rays for melting the ice caps. But if you are a follower of Casey, he speaks about the misuse of the crystals as being the issue that led to the decline. And so this is where we have to look at credible channel sources versus scientific information and find that merging. And all of my studies of Casey have pretty much validated that he was right on in this in his interpretation of scientific events. I tend to believe that the crystals were misused and that led to some degree to the sinking of Atlantis. How many of you agree with that? How many of you feel like you were in Atlantis and they did have crystal technology? I think most of us just sense that. And so I think a lot of the reason many of you are drawn here and a lot of the reason many of you want to return is because this time we have the feeling that we want to get it right. This time we're not going to get tricked again. And you have to let go of the guilt of having them taken away because the Poseidons did not lose the crystals. The Poseidons of the Law of One did not misuse them. It was the other group. And that other group, as I said, came forth in many times. What is happening now is an overbleed. If you see this thing in the Middle East, it's an overbleed of unresolved energy related to the Crusades. We have to resolve all of these energies. And so part of our role in the return of the Law of One is getting it right this time. And so back to the point, the energies that are, that are happening now on the planet have enabled us to operate in a greater matrix. The tools are there. This solar radiation activates the pineal because it changes the anionic to cationic ratio and there have been tests. You can take an ionic generator and put it in your house and use it as a meditational tool. And all of these air cleaners that you find are anionic generators. Buy an ionic generator. I bought one. I had to get rid of it because Ann said it turned the walls black. She's uh, very proud to be Scottish, but she has absolutely operates a pristine house. I used to get in trouble for putting footprints on the carpet, <laughs> but always been very, very proud of her Scottish and British heritage. Well, she would tell me about all the contributions that Scotland had made to modern society and even in the United States. I said, uh, well, what you may not be aware of is that John Muir, the Scotsman, of course, established the national park system in the States. I said, but there was actually a Scotsman that was responsible for the Grand Canyon. How many of you knew that? Yeah, centuries ago, a Scotsman dropped a penny and started digging for it. <laughs> Anne didn't like that one too much. And I said, no, it's about, it's about perseverance. And so she accepted that. <laughs> but back to our, our point about the changes that are taking place. There are changes that are taking place that allow us to be responsible creators. People are having more and more multidimensional types of experiences. Uh, how many of you went to Egypt with us in 2012? We had 
125 people inside the king's chamber. That was packed in pretty good. And we took pictures and their orbs. Henry is part of that photograph. Bruce is part of it. Orbs everywhere. And we were seeing them. And I don't know if it was because of the energy of the king's chambers or because we had used up all the oxygen and we're, <laughs> we're, breathing, we're breathing carbon monoxide. <laughs> we got 126 people inside the king's chamber. That was uh, pretty interesting. There are many people who are elders in this group that are moving forward. Back to our point about the changes that are taking place. There are changes that are taking place that allow us to be responsible creators. People are having more and more multidimensional types of experiences. And what I think, and so part of our role in the return of the law of one is getting it right this time. Does anyone have any questions before I close? Say that again. One thing about quartz that I would, I know that a lot of you here, when you go to the Coleman mine on Monday, are going to be looking at quartz. People have the idea that sometimes when it comes to quartz that more is better. And that's not the case. Sometimes less is more. One thing that used to happen to me when I'd walk into a crystal shop is it felt to me, I'd get sick at my stomach and it felt like there were 15 radios all playing on separate stations. It was just too much. They were not in harmony. And so when you acquire quartz crystals, which are transmitters and receivers, make sure that you don't get ones that are in frequential disharmony because then it has the opposite effect. You can get too much quartz you need to get a grid and make sure that they're in harmonic placement. How do you bring them in tune? Several people have asked me. I use tuning forks. The best way also is with breath. But if you have two of a certain type of crystal that are in harmonic, you just need to get them far enough apart. This whole idea of programming and clearing a crystal in one go, to me, is unrealistic. Sometimes it can take months to impose your energy into a crystal, if at all. When you work with a five Vogel crystal, a thought amplifier, it's gonna take you weeks, if not months, to build that energy field that goes in there that becomes part you and part of that. Five crystals are amazing tools, but they are tools, and you have to work with them. So we're gonna end now. Thank you all very much.
got nowhere left to hide It looks like love is fine Don't be too fine. Don't be too fine. Don't be too fine. 